I want to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land we're meeting on today, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, and uh, thank our speaker for the welcome to country. And I want to say how wonderful it was to hear Sally talking about uh, her teams, because when we think about this $160 million wasteful and divisive plebiscite, it's the young Sally that I'm thinking of. It's the young Sallys in every school and every community around this country who are thinking about coming out. Do they trust their family? Do they trust their friends? Who do they tell first and how do they even say the words? They're the people who will be hearing from some of the most senior people in this land that there's something wrong with them, that there's something wrong with the way they were born, there's something wrong with the people they love. And that is not true. And I don't want to hear, I don't want to have young Sally and the people like her right around this country ever to think for a single moment that there is anything wrong with them because of who they love. <laughs> but it's not just young Sally. Last time we were here, we had a speaker, John Chalice. Many of you would remember John speaking at the last rally right here. John Chalice is 87 years old. He has been with his partner for 50 years. They loved each other when it was illegal to love each other, even in private. They have a relationship that has stood the test of time better than most relationships I know. And what does John say about marriage equality? He says, I haven't got that much longer. I want to be able to marry my partner before it's too late. So for young Sally and for people like John who are worried about the clock ticking, we need to do this now. We need to do it in the first hundred days of a new government because I think it's pretty obvious that Malcolm Turnbull's not going to move now uh, before the election. But we can do it in the first hundred days of a shortened Labor government. This plebiscite, if it happens, it won't happen at the time of the next election. The government's already confessed that they're rushing to the polls in July or certainly sooner than uh, the end of the year. So it won't happen at the next election. Then what happens? We go into a long bureaucratic process of determining the question and setting up the mechanisms and rolling out the Australian Electoral Commission. We're talking about a process that will take not months but years before this issue is determined. And Malcolm Turnbull says we have to do this because Australians have a right to speak and have their voices heard. His own government members say that they're going to ignore the results of the plebiscite. We know a majority of Australians support marriage equality, but Liberals and Nationals are already saying it doesn't matter what the plebiscite says, they will ignore the results of the plebiscite. What is the point of spending $160 million that could be spent on health, that could be spent on education, could even be spent on the Safe Schools program if you really wanted to invest that way. Could be spent on all of the issues that Australians genuinely care about. Instead, we'll have a plebiscite. We'll have young people hearing that there's something wrong with them. We'll have kids growing up with same-sex parents hearing that there's something wrong with their families. We'll have old people waiting years and years longer than they should, and then we'll have the Liberals and Nationals ignore it anyway. This must happen now. We should already have passed this legislation. The question is not why. The question is why have we not done this already? Thank you.